when it comes to the future of the labor market, we definitely need to incorporate what, what is the impact of technology? I know there's a lot of speak to say, but technology is seeing jobs, but technology has created jobs as well. So just to, to showcase that, this is world employment numbers. Research has shown that the number of employment opportunities are positively correlated with technological advancements, as you can see. And even more so over the past few years, exponentially increasing employment. Basically, it's been estimated that more than 85% 85 of employment growth over the past 80 years has been due to technology. The number of employed, as you can see in this graph, has increased from just over 500 million in the early um, or late 1800s near to 3.5 billion today. So 4R has created jobs that did not exist before. Just think of, we, we all adapted during COVID time. We all were forced to adapt during COVID time. We, we um, as you who just made the, the joke in any case to say, if you can't come in person, join online. Pre-COVID, we didn't know about online meetings and attending and it, everybody just think about it in the beginning of COVID when that started, you're, you're on mute. Just think about it. Your, your camera is, can you just move your camera? Please? So think about what has happened with technological advances, online shopping. Take a lot. Your online shoppers, uh, think about job creation that's happening there. 60-60, we can pay ASAP. That was not there prior to COVID, but it created jobs in thinking about that person that's actually responsible for packaging, selecting your groceries, then handing it over to a driver, making sure, and that driver needs to ensure that your groceries arrive at your door in one piece. So online retail will continue to, to actually benefit from technology. The second example is ride hailing, Uber, your bolts in, in the Western Cape, etc. That has seen significant job creation because there, a person that has been unemployed, if he could obtain a car, could join this service and actually then start uh, driving people around, actually creating a job, actually taking income home. So where technology is promising to drive growth across the African continent, there is unfortunately that danger that Prof already alluded to, that it also takes jobs. So South Africa needs to find the correct balance in how can we maximize the efficiency brought about by technology and actually continue to grow and create job opportunities and not the technology uh, take the place of many people. So to determine the level to which the different employees in South Africa are affected by 4IR, we've actually done some analysis, um, a bit of econometrics, etc. going in. I'm not going to go into too much detail. But basically to see, determined by the nature of the job, how are employees and which employees are influenced the most in a positive or negative manner when it comes to uh, the implementation of oil. The International Monetary Fund estimates that in emerging economies, about 40% of employees are impacted to a very large extent by the fourth industrial revolution. Our results show, if you look to South Africa itself, at the bottom, if we look at fully impacted and to a large extent, that adds up to 50.6% of our employees have been affected or will be affected by technology over time. The different sectors in which the economy will be greatly impacted by 4 ir the analysis shows that, first of all, we see in our mining and quarrying sector, electricity, gas, and water, transport, storage, and communication, financial intermediation, insurance, real estate, business services, 
and community social and personal services. That's everything that, that Prof just alluded to as well, to say that there's stagnation in that. So what is happening in those sectors? For example, in the mining sector, we could see there's, there's a lot of adoption technology, with the Internet of Things, etc., that can assist with job uh, with with efficiency creation in, in the mining industry. But what's happening to the jobs on the other side? And the same goes then for if we look to our health services, financial intermediation, and your, your banks, a lot of banks needed to uh, close down branches because everything has gone online. A lot of banks actually prefer, if you just look at the way that your banking fees are structured, you no longer, you pay a lot more in banking fees when you go into a bank branch compared to when you do everything online. So that's just incorporating and, and, and just intensifying this impact of the technology. Truth of the matter is that all our economic sectors are linked in some way. So there's no escape to the impact of technology in, in our economy. Then if we look to the level to which employees are impacted by according to their highest level of education. You can clearly see there at the bottom. Oh, I see it's been that's not what I yeah. But to our higher end of qualifications, there's a strong correlation then between the level of education and the level to which employees are impacted. But that then makes sense because Prof just alluded to that as well. A lot of our employees are those that have a tertiary education or have com a completed grade 12. So, but we can also ascribe this to a lot when it comes to technology, it's the need for cognitive complexity when it comes to doing the jobs. So, and, and with education um, being a proxy of that, we could clearly understand, understand the results that we are seeing. If we then finally look at the level to which they are impacted according to the study fields, the field that that's a, all this information is in the body label for survey, we could see the study fields impacted the most, and to a very extent, this is actually on a positive side of those with um, ICT related businesses. Education and training, your engineers, healthcare, legal, life sciences, physical sciences. And those are all, all the industries that are impacted as well to a very large extent, as mentioned in a few slides back. So what does that mean for us? What we've seen is that employees with a higher level of education working in professional, managerial, scientific, engineering, finance and ICT related fields are the people that will most likely be impacted to the greatest extent. According to the IMF, these are the employees that will benefit the most. And that just brings about the concern about the intensification of our income and our wealth inequality in South Africa. We already have a fairly large divide between those with the skills and those without the skills. So unemployment in South Africa is to a large extent caused by incompatibility of skills. That's what Prof just alluded to as well. We also have the inability, as mentioned, of the economy to actually uh, create adequate jobs to the growing level. Our South African youth continues to be disadvantaged with recording much larger than the average rates of unemployment. And the true reality is unfortunately that South African employees, we generally do not cons uh, have the cognitive, technical and academical skills to cope with the job changes that comes with technological change. Because a problem there stems even from our youth not obtaining those skills that is not part of our curriculum in school. With the World Economic Forum, they actually, with um, the Future of Jobs report from 2023 that was released, it clearly shows that new technology 
is creating new job opportunities, but they require different skills. Jobs requiring critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, digital literacy. It's all about enforcing entrepreneurship almost again. Are becoming more and more important. The World Economic Forum estimates that close to half of the world's population within the next five years will need to adjust their core skills in order to make sure they, that they remain relevant. Therefore, there's a real need to reskill our labor force. When people think about job losses when it comes to technology, people think, but it's machines and robots and stuff that's going to displace us. Think about it as well. There's a risk that it's not about losing a job to a robot. It's losing a job to somebody else that actually knows how to use technology. It's losing a job to someone that actually knows how to efficiently get the job done faster using technology. So therefore, South Africa, we need to focus on upskilling and reskilling our workers. But never mind that, we also need to remember that our, us as employees, we have the responsibility to be continuous learners. We can't think about, yes, I've done my degree, I've, I've done this short course. I continuously need to learn because the world is adapting out there. If we look about the, there's a quote from the book, Automation and the Future of Work. It holds immense significance. It says, the key to thriving in the automated future is adaptability and continuous learning. So how can South Africa successfully navigate 4IR? We basically need to bridge the digital skills gap. So with training programs, starting from our youth, starting from school level. We need to foster innovation and create new industries alongside this automation. But how can that be possible? With policies that foster innovation and entrepreneurship. The government needs to take part as well. And with that, we also need to develop and, and government needs to take that role to protect our workers during these transitions to ensure that there's a fair distribution of the benefits of technology. 